Hi, I'm Mike Sibley. And I'm Carrie Boynton. And today, Mike and I are going to be talking about the PPP Round 2 program. So why don't we just dive right in, right? So Mike, can you tell me a little bit more about what this program is and how it's different from the first round of PPP? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, so back in December, December 27th, Congress passed a law that said it was signed into law by the president uh, that they were going to allow more funding for businesses. And so we've coined the term PPP2. First round was back in, in March. It got extended into June and then eventually August. And we're calling that now the first round. This is the second round, so PPP2. And there's quite a bit that was pretty interesting about this round because they came back out and they said, okay, we're reinvigorating round one. And we'll talk about that in, in a couple of minutes. But also now there's round two, which means if you've gotten one before, you have the potential to get another PPP loan. Again, the idea here is that you're going to help uh, keep businesses funded, keep them moving, keep payroll, keep people on the payroll. It was the same thing going back to, to the first round is we want to make sure that we're able to keep people employed. So uh, by allowing the, the PPP2, it's still hitting those businesses that are continuing to struggle. And we're going to talk about uh, economic uncertainty and, and what we think that means. There's not a clear definition of what it means, but for those businesses that are still facing that that economic uncertainty that are struggling right now, uh, the funding is supposed to keep keep uh, those businesses going, keep people on payroll. And uh, it's gonna look very, very similar to PPP1. Now, what they did with PPP2 is they had set-asides. And so there were set-asides for small businesses, minority-owned businesses, and low-income areas. And they allowed those businesses to apply first and then slowly allowed more and more uh, larger businesses to, to come into um, allowing to apply for. But they really they did change some of the, the parameters to get into PPP2. And the first being you had to be less than 300 employees. So before in round one, you had to be less than 500 employees. Uh, that, was a, that was a key thing. The second thing is uh, you had to have revenues, and we'll talk a little bit more about that after, but you had to have revenues that decreased by 25% in any one quarter compared to a prior quarter. Uh, you had to meet, um, you had to be, certain industries were not allowed to get into it, and uh, you had to have this, this economic uncertainty that, uh, in, that your business was facing right now. They also limited the funds to $2 million. The first round was, was $10 million. And what was really interesting about it is for those businesses that are restaurants and bars and hotels, uh, they're allowing you to, to get three and a half times your monthly payroll. So, um, you know, so that allowed you to get three and a half months, basically, of payroll, whereas before it was two and a half months. And it all came down to what is your what kind of entity are you? So if you're that restaurant, bar and hotel, you're getting you're getting the three and a half. Now, for our manufacturers out there, this is two and a half times, okay? So that means we're gonna take your payroll for an entire year, we're gonna divide it by 12 and times that by two and a half, and that's basically um, what, what you're getting. So it's, it's a really good, it, it is a nice relief. It's nice that it's back again for those businesses that are struggling. Uh, we're, we're able to work with them and help them get back into that funding again. So that's round two. Now, just to mention round one, now, round one, if you did not take a loan, and we had clients that decided to pay their loan back, get, just gave it back. They didn't want it because there was all this negative press about taking loans and should you, and so they gave it back. Uh, there was also entities like uh, Chambers of Commerce or 501c6s that weren't allowed to take it the first time around. Well, they are allowed to take it again, and they fall under the first round rules. So the $10 million, the 500 employees, they don't have to have the revenue decrease. And so uh, it's opened it up quite a bit. So again, for our manufacturers, you may not have applied back in, in March or April. You may not have felt that you had the economic uncertainty. Uh, you may have given it back. Now, if you're facing a situation where you have that uncertainty, you're worried about the future, you're worried about your projects and backlog, uh, it is available to you again. So that's something to consider. So you mentioned uh, reductions in revenues. 
So what does that really mean from a manufacturing standpoint? Okay, so there's, let's start at high level first. So what they first came out with is they said, you've got to look at it on a calendar quarter. And that was one of the first questions that we got from clients right away was, is it any three months? They just said a quarter. Is it any three months in the year? And the SBA and the Treasury came out and said, no, it's specifically a calendar quarter. So you would take January through March of 2020, and you would compare it to January through March of 2019. And if you had a decrease in revenue of 25% or greater, that automatically, that puts you into the round for qual one of the factors for qualifying. And so then, but then they broke it out and they said, well, listen, if your annual revenues are down by 25%, that must mean somewhere along the line, you had a quarter that was down 25%. So you could look at it annually. But the big question that, that you were referring to is what is revenues? And the, the way they define it in the, the statute was somewhat clear, but not, sort of not clear. Uh, basically they call it gross receipts. And there's really not been any clarifications on this, and I don't expect to see any clarifications uh, around this, but um, essentially what we're looking at is it's your book method of counting for revenues. <clears throat> you're, you're, so if you're accrual basis, meaning you recognize revenues uh, when you ship out your, your products, uh, that's probably the basis you're going to use. If you're cash basis, that's probably the basis that you're going to, in other words, you record revenue when you get the cash in the door, that's the basis you're going to get. That said, you know, if your tax returns at the end of the year, you file those tax returns and that's the basis you want to use as annual, you might use your tax basis method. And so the way it, it defines out is it's, it could be uh, your book basis. It, you can do it, whether that's on a cash accrual, what they call OCBOA, which is other comprehensive basis, generally tax basis. So I think the best thing to do if you're uncertain is to give us a call, call your CPA and ask them, okay, here's what I've got going on. First thing we're going to ask you to do is let's take a look at your quarterly revenues as you've got them. Let's see where you're at and talk through your, your methods of accounting so we can, so we can really understand uh, whether you qualify or not. And that's, and that's been one of the things, obviously, if, if, if you don't reach that 25% in any of those, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a no-go from that standpoint. So we really, you know, we really got to look at it. One of the key things though is the PPP funding you received in March, that first round, if, if you recorded that as income, that is excluded from uh, those gross receipts. So that's one of the key things they did make that, if you received an idle loan, that is excluded from gross receipts. So don't let that uh, count against you. Uh, or don't don't think because you got that money you weren't down 25%, you're not able to. In terms of the actual loan calculation itself, are there any changes to that or is it pretty much the same calculation that was used previously? It it did shift a little bit. Before when when we were back in March, the calculation was more or less what they call payroll costs. And payroll costs were all inclusive of gross wages. Now keep that in mind, gross wages. There's there's been some uh, a lot of misconceptions about that, but uh, gross wages plus the retirement or you know, the employer portion of retirement payments. So if you do a profit sharing, you do a 401k match, the employer portion is there. The employer portion of health insurance, uh, but also they get they clarified that that also includes dental and vision and life and those things. That that wasn't in there before. And so you you from the calculation standpoint, you're going to want to look at grabbing all of those but now for the second now what they said for the second round is okay you you need to use the last 12 months of payroll now that's a kind of convoluted thing when you're in the middle of january to try to use the last 12 months so they said okay as, as a kind of a practical expedient you can either use all of 2019 or all of 2020 and use that and use one of those as, instead so what we've been doing is looking at which payroll is higher now in most cases that I've seen so far with companies facing 25% plus reductions in revenue, payroll is lower in 2020 than it was in 2019. So we've been using 2019, but you're gonna wanna look at that uh, and see which, which one probably gives you the, the best, most advantageous uh, situation there. And then add all that up. Now, if for many companies, what we've been able to see is the same exact calculation we did for you back in March or April is the same exact calculation that we're using now because 
it's it, some of that stuff, the other stuff doesn't apply. Uh, you take that monthly, like I said earlier, you're going to multiply it by two and a half, and that's going to be your loan um, that, that you're going to be able to apply for. So I don't want to miss a crucial piece of information here. What is the deadline to apply? And is this a first come first serve basis like it was the first time around? My understanding, uh, of course, you can take it for what it's worth. But as I talk to lenders and other providers that we've been working with, is they feel like there's plenty of money out there. Yes, of course, you want to get your application in. I don't know if that's what will happen. Well, we'll run out of money at all. My crystal ball doesn't work that good. You do have until March 31st to apply. And there, is, so the way it's going to work as well. So you've got till March, you're gonna go through, you might go through your lender like you did last time. Um, and other pe some people are using some of these online technologies that have come out, these financial technology companies that uh, are available. So there's a lot of different ones out there to use, but you're gonna go through and you're gonna go online and you're gonna apply. If you go through your lender, like you did before, they already have your 2019 information, some of your other information. So it's supposed to streamline it. A little bit but like I said you know if, if you think you qualify try to get in sooner than later just because I don't know what's going to happen but you do have until March now a few key differences this time around when you're when you're going through it you're going to see the application for round two is a little bit different it now is going to ask you for what quarter did your revenue go down so there's going to be some boxes and it's going to ask for comparison it's also going to have additional boxes that say okay what are you going to use this loan for in the past, it was payroll and rent and, and uh, mortgage payments and things like that. Well, now, uh, and, and I would suggest uh, going back, we did a uh, webinar back in early January where we go into this much more detail, but it now includes certain supplier costs and it'll include uh, accounting software and HR type software costs, tracking costs. So there are other costs now that are able to be captured as part of this uh, in this covered period, the covered period meaning from the day you get the loan through 24 weeks later. So it's not just the payroll and the rent and mortgage payments. So there's there's more that's actually covered. So you're going to have options to check those boxes. But I do encourage you get get your information together now. Start working with us. Start working with your CPA. Start working with your lender to pull that together if you do qualify for that. So let's say for whatever reason, a business owner didn't apply the first time around. They don't really have a relationship with a banker. Maybe they have someone who files their tax return, but they don't really have a relationship with a true advisor. What do you, who do you, uh, you know, what do you do in that situation? Who do you turn to? Obviously we are a great option, but outside <laughs> of us. Yeah, I, I would, you know, I, I do think that the first thing you should do is, you know, talk to your CPA. If you don't have that relationship anywhere else, I talk to your CPA because they're going to be able to point you in the right direction. Certainly, we have many, many clients coming to us and we're helping them through this process. But I would start with your CPA to, to, to look at, see whether you qualify to begin with and they can help point you in the right direction. Uh, you know, there's there's certainly even more questions that you could have whether or not you it applies to you, but uh, you, and you may even have from your bank that you may be receiving emails. And, and we've had clients say, hey, I'm receiving this email, I need to apply. And well, first let's go through the qualifications. And, may, and some of them didn't qualify, they didn't have the, the reductions in revenue. So it's a great question, I do, but I think, you know, always start off with a conversation with your CPA to see if, it's, if this is the, the right direction for you to be going. So I think we've all heard, you know, in the media that the SBA is having some issues with processing these loans. We know there were some issues in the first round with bigger banks and things like that. So what's going on? What are you hearing? Yeah, so there's been news of late um, that the SBA, of course, let's let's to some degree, I'm kind of I want to cut them a little bit of slack, right? We we got a law passed in early in late December with a mandate to be issuing these loans two weeks later. So. Uh, the programming that has to go into this is is probably pretty complicated. Um, so and on so, so you have the SBA that's got to be ready. You have the lending institutions that have to be ready, and all of that has to connect together. There's there's this data connection that um, as the information is flowing up, it's got to match how the SBA is working and vice versa. The the problem lately that just recently came out a couple of days ago was if you were a first time borrower who had their application in for forgiveness and you applied for round two, the SBA software was automatically rejecting some of those, uh, not all of them, 
but uh, it was rejecting some. So you, as you know, as our listeners out there, you, maybe you went through that pain already, uh, but the SBA is supposed to put them back in the queue again. So they're working on this fix. Of course, this is a tremendous um, concern for the lending lenders who are trying to do this right. They're trying to get these things processed through and they're trying to figure out how to do it in a way that's efficient. Uh, I should I should say, you know, and, and, you know, th they really want to get this right, and they're worried about, hey, what's our liability and all this if we if we put one through that that shouldn't. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, the SBA has indicated they're trying to fix this issue. Um, there's been other data connection issues, just software programming. So it seems like on the I know there's been some that have already been funded, and there's a lot of money out there has been funded. Others, it seems like it's taking eight to 10 days or so of backlog. And now we're starting to see some of our clients starting to get that funding coming through. So just be patient with the process. You're, once you're in, you're in. It's just a matter of being patient with it and letting them work through those issues. So are there any other misconceptions or any other information about the PPP2 loan that business owners should be aware of? Yeah, I just I think one important I've talked about economic I've, I've alluded to economic uncertainty through through this and it, it's it's something that if you go back to the first round and we talked about it a lot all summer long in our PPP updates uh, but those were more general and so you know for our manufacturers let's talk about what economic uncertainty is and and since there's no definition what we've said is document why you think that and you know for example you may be a manufacturer that works on projects and you might see some of those projects being pushed off uh, to the second, third or fourth quarter of this year of, of 2021. Or you might see projects not even happening or canceled. And what is that doing to you? Well, that's reducing your revenue. That's reducing um, the opportunity for you to have you know, workers being productive. And so the idea with the PVP is that this covers that time frame, so these projects can get back and going. That's one example of uncertainty. So what I suggest that you do is document why are you facing uncertainty. Perhaps you've had a workforce issue where several people have come down with COVID and are in quarantine, and you can't actually produce any backlog, and you're trying to keep them paid. You don't want them to quit. You don't want them to go anywhere. So you're you're trying to deal with that situation. Could be the projects that I mentioned. Uh, you know, talk about your industry conditions, talk about the things that are create this concern. And of course, you know, we're still in this pandemic. We hear the numbers are still, even though they seem to be maybe climb, coming back a little bit, there's still a lot going on out there. There's still a lot of spread. The vaccine piece seems to be slowly happening. I know there's a lot of hope out there, but it's still not there. So there is a lot of uncertainty, but not everybody faces it. And I think that's one of the misconceptions is one of the things that we need to make sure, you know, you need to make sure that you face it. I mean, if you're, if you're having it, if you had a, if, if you had your first quarter was way down, but all the second, third and fourth quarters are great and you see nothing but great quarters coming up, that probably is not, that's probably not on it, an economic uncertainty situation. And, you know, let's, let's try to keep the money for those businesses to try to keep people employed and off, off unemployment, frankly. So, you know, I, I just think keep that in mind uh, as you go. And I think from a manufacturing standpoint, you can look at your backlog, you can look at your order history, you can look at your sales and see how, how things are going. And you can, you know, document it that way as to whether or not, you know, this is something you should apply for. Well, thank you, Mike, for taking the time to explain all of that to us today. It was incredibly informative. Uh, as we receive updates, of course, we will be updating you as well. And if you're a business owner out there who thinks you might qualify and you don't have somebody to turn to, please feel free to reach out to Mike or myself. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in today. To learn more about James Moore & Company's manufacturing services, go to jmco.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our More on Manufacturing series to receive updates when new videos and podcasts are released. If you'd like to be a guest, or if there's a topic you'd like to see covered on a future episode, contact us on our website. You can also follow us on social media for more news as the landscape on manufacturing continues to rapidly evolve.